Okay. Hey, everybody. Um, so this is a second attempt at the stream. Um, I have upgraded to OBS uh, version 28.0.3 or something like that, and it, it stopped the um, uh, the OBS uh, Droid app from working, which is how I do my point of view stuff uh, wirelessly. So um, in this stream, um, I've got a um, Z690 uh, Creator Wi-Fi motherboard, a pro art from, uh, from Asus in a brand new build a client put together. Um, it's in a Be Quiet case, a nice one. I think it's the 802. And the issue is it's not giving video. It was, they told me, giving video um, until they plugged in an extra cable to the motherboard. And at that point, they just uh, I think they just stopped. They got scared. They, they were going to break something. Um, so this is the this is working what we're going to start with, and you can see the um, the power cable right there. It's just above where the uh, it's between the 24 pin and the um, uh, the um, USB C connector. It's just an extra six pins coming from the power supply. And I looked up looked it up in the motherboard, and it's for extra power for the PCI Express slots. Hey Albert and Simon, how y'all doing? Um, so I wouldn't think that would cause video to, to stop happening, but I uh, figured we open it up and, and, uh, and see if we disconnect it, do we get video back? And I also, before I do that, I want to see just of, if I plug it in the way that it is, um, what happens. Let me see, I'm going to switch to first person view here. Hey Chris, good morning. Good morning to you. Okay, so here's the computer. Plug in power. And an HDMI cable. Switch my input here. And I believe it's a 3060, an RTX 3060. Okay, so we got a a danger symbol here on the uh, on the all-in-one uh, liquid cooler. So it's something else he mentioned that he had moved around where the uh, the liquid coolers um, fan, or he wasn't sure maybe it was a a pump lead uh, was connected. But this is basically saying, hey, there's a problem. Is what it's saying. Okay, so this appears to be a tachometer. Um, it's only got one wire, so I think that's it's just for reading the, the speed of a fan. So we're going to plug that. I think he had it plugged in right. It's it's plugged in where the CPU um, fan would be connected, and that's so the system can can uh, read the speed of the fan. Oh, I just reached in here, and one of these was off just a little bit. One of the uh, um, the uh, the four plus four pins up here was was slightly out. It it uh, popped in whenever I did that. I'm curious as to why that's doing that though. Uh, so it's got some extra. It's got a cable leading to the back, which I imagine would come down here at some point and plug into one of the USBs, but I'm not sure. But having having that with a a triangle and an excla exclamation doesn't doesn't make me feel good. Let's go ahead and try and turn it on just briefly, see if we get video. Okay, it's going through a little Corsair animation. It says the liquid temp is 24 degrees. And we're not getting video yet. I, I would have thought it would have happened by now. So it's four sticks of RAM, they're all G-Skill. Yeah, so no video. Let me turn this thing back off. Okay, it's not respecting the, uh, the power button press to turn off. I'm gonna try five seconds of hold. Uh, let's see, Nevitz, 
quick question. The headset you use to mount your cell phone, what brand is it? Um, I don't know the brand. Um, I bought it off Amazon. If you do a search on Amazon for phone head mount, you'll you'll find it. It's like 20 bucks. Okay, so it turned off. Uh, let's try taking away that extra six pin because I don't think it's required and it may have actually caused a problem. So that's disconnected. Still on. And still no video. And it's not respecting the uh, the quick push to uh, to turn the system off. Okay, so I'm curious about this um, this liquid cooler, where that's going, and is it plugged in where it's supposed to be? Um, let's look at that. So this case, it has eject buttons up here at the top that then allow you to pull the side. Oh, I cut myself. That's going to bleed. There's a, a sharp bit of metal right here that I, I push too hard on and yeah, there it goes. Can confirm right here is freaking sharp. And it's not metal, it's plastic. I, very often cut myself on plastic. Put too much pressure and slide your finger or slide your flesh over it and it bleeds. Okay. Uh, so that cable is coming down here. Looks like it breaks out into several things. It's a vampire, yeah. Yeah, don't press hard on monitors. They do, they do break. Is the 12100F good? Asked Little Smoke. I, I want to say that's a, that's a four core processor um, without onboard video, but I mean four core processor is not bad if that's what uh, what you can afford. Let's see what we got here. Okay, so this is going to a USB extension cable. Okay, so that that would give it communication with the motherboard. And what else do we have here? What's coming out of this? So it breaks into two more things, which are going down here to the bottom. What is this? Aha! There is a fan, it's a fan controller basically is what it is. Okay, so then you would plug in your fans for spinning and these are for RGB, so three each. And we have three fans along the top. Let's see, what are those? Is it? Is the cooler at the front though? Coolers are connecting these three. So that that appears to be correct to me. I wonder why there's a an exclamation point. I don't know if y'all can see that, but it's a bleeding. 
Were you call, were you calling were you referring to me as a vampire because I licked my own wound? Sometimes the best thing for it. Mm, okay, so it looks like it's connected properly. The cooler, anyway. I wish I knew what it was. He didn't bring me the um, the box the cooler came in. I don't think he brought me the um, the manual for it. He brought me the manual for the motherboard, the case, the GPU, graphics card. Uh, he bought a copy of Windows 10 or Windows 11 Pro. And he brought me extra cables and mounting stuff, but no... Uh, no indication as to what the cooler is, you know? At least not that I've found so far. Just extra mounting hardware. Okay, so that's not helpful. But that doesn't that doesn't tell us why there's no video. Even if the cooler wasn't connected at all, there should still be video. Um What to do, what to do. The other computers I have are all laptops. Uh, there's three, three laptops. One needs a battery, it's an MSI. One has no video, it's a Dell Latitude. And the other one has a error message indicating uh, that it can't find anything to boot to, which usually means the drive failed. Okay. So we could try taking the RAM out, maybe putting in two sticks. Could try taking out the graphics card, see if we have, uh, if it's a chip with onboard video. Um, that's another thing I don't know. Is if it's a K or a KS of the Core i9 12th gen or 11th gen for that matter, it would have built-in video, so we wouldn't need this graphics card in order to get video out of it. It's just, there's a possibility it's a, it's got an F in its model name and there's no onboard video, but let's give it a try. Let's um, take the graphics card out and try using it with the built-in graphics that hopefully it has. See if we get video out of this thing. Oh, wow. How's everybody doing this morning? It is still morning, isn't it? At least for me, anyway. It's uh, 10.35 where I am. <laughs> Case fights back, indeed. Uh, let's see. I was hoping it was one of the newer ones that had an eject button. Look, well, some of the newer motherboards, the higher end ones, will have a button over here you press in order to eject the uh, the CPU. Oh, that's cool. That's a nice reflection there on the uh, the CPU cooler. Kind of a blurry close-up version of me. But um, yeah, this this one doesn't have that. So you just have to press down here. And hopefully get it to come out. Coming. There we go. Okay. So yeah, it's a Gigabyte RTX 3060 Gaming OC 12 GD. So probably 12 gigabytes of RAM. All right. Let's let's give it power. And HDMI into the motherboard. Uh, get up here. There we go. Okay, and turn her on. Yeah, so we're still getting the the exclamation um, mark and triangle here. The fans are spinning. All right, we get video. It doesn't look like we're getting video still. This case is so huge, I have to look around it to see chat. 
Nick Hill says it's 9 p.m. where he is. Wow. <laughs> Update the BIOS. Yeah, I guess we could try that. Oh, wait a minute. We might have video. We got a blue light. Yeah. Okay, so it took forever, but it, it came up. Um, the system posted in safe mode says... Uh, previous post attempts failing because of system instability, okay. Um, or if the power button was held in to force the system off. I did do that. I did hold down the power button. Okay, but we got video. That's good. Let's see. I guess now I can plug in uh, USB and uh, for mouse and keyboard. Wow, this thing has a lot of USB. There's a lot of USB-C on this thing, actually. I don't know if y'all can see this. I've got it off my head. Mouse, keyboard, F1. Since so it's got three Samsung SSDs, one terabytes under a RAID control, it says up there. Weird. Uh, I mean, why wouldn't you get one of them two terabyte? I don't know, maybe he has some special plan. All right, so F2 didn't do jack. I'm pressing F1. Let's see what happens. All right, so it took it to the took us to the BIOS. He did tell me that he hadn't installed Windows yet. It is seeing a Windows uh, 10 installer here, though. At least that's what it says, even though I'm pretty sure he bought Windows 11 is what I saw, at least what I remember. But this is great. We're getting video. Um, I guess we can try putting back the graphics card. It is seeing all the RAM. The BIOS version is 1403. Mm. Yeah, let me, let me check that. Um, really remember Windows 11. Hang on a second, y'all. But he had left the, the installer key, and it looks like an installer key. Welcome to Windows 11, even though it says Windows 10. All right, well, maybe it is Windows 10, or Windows 11, even though it says plainly Windows 10. Hmm. Right. Well, let's uh, let's go to a let's go to boot menu. So I'm hitting press press F eight for boot boot menu, and it's defaulting. The only thing it can see is this uh, Windows installer. Uh, let's go with that. Let's press enter and see what happens. So let's see if it boots into a Windows installer. That looks like Windows ten to me. But if you bought Windows 11, wouldn't it come with the USB, with the proper version? Yeah, it looks like it came right there. I think I do have a copy of this. So. Or Windows 11. It's just it's weird that what he has in there and what looks like it came in the box with Windows 11 isn't Windows 11. Uh, okay. So that's Windows 10, that's Windows 10. Where's my Windows 11 on USB? I think this is it. Pretty sure this is Windows, Windows 11. I'm going to take away the Windows installer that I'm pretty sure is Windows uh, Windows 10 we're gonna plug this guy in and we're gonna restart the computer Let's see restart cool restart button worked CPU fan isn't connected to CPU fan header pins, says Team Unified. Did you, did you see that? Because there was an indication on the screen that uh, no fan was, was being reported. 
There is a there is a uh, tachometer plugged in. Let me see. No, I screwed up. I didn't plug it in right. I plug I plugged it on the wrong pins. Okay, should should work now. Let's see if we get video back though. Because we restarted the computer. light lit up but it's so freaking bright I can't I can't see what it is there's a light right here doing some kind of indication but yeah no video so after one successful um, video display a reset has made it not come back okay what do we got down here I'm looking for I see the I see the clear the clear CMOS pins. We may give that a try. Yeah, we're not getting video. I'm gonna power off the computer and we're gonna touch these two pins together. And what that will do is it'll reset the uh, the motherboard back to defaults. So it's it's listed as clear CMOS, and I saw it a second ago. Where did where did it go? There it is. So it's these two guys right here. Reach in and connect them with a piece of metal. Just for a few seconds is all it needs. All right, main power back on and power button. It's gonna be a pretty system. Okay, it switched to a green light here on the motherboard, and there's video. Okay. Right. Well, let's uh, let's do F1 to enter setup. I'm not going to change anything. I'm just going to press F12, F10 on the keyboard to save and exit. Not made any changes. That's okay. I just want to save so it doesn't remember the previous uh, previous failure. Let's see if we get video back a little quicker this time. I'm thinking installing Windows 11 and then updating the BIOS. Okay, we're getting video back again quickly. Well, there was there was a video signal going to the monitor quickly or uh, briefly, but now it's back to no video. I'm also wondering if it'd be a good idea to take out half the RAM. A DRAM issue, you say, for the, uh, the yellow light. So the yellow light went away, and now we got a white, oh, it turned itself off, and it's coming back on. Might have got video back. Yeah, here's video. 
CPU fan speed detection error. Okay. Pretty sure I have that tachometer plugged into CPU fan. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's connected properly. Let's look at the manual. Maybe I'm just incorrectly reading what's on the motherboard. Okay, so yeah, there's the RAM. Uh, so it's listed, oh. So CPU fan and CPU optional. So CPU fan is the rightmost one. So right now I have it plugged into CPU optional. Okay. Uh, well, I can. I think I can fix that pretty quickly. So the AIO pump is right here. I don't know if y'all can see this, but um, that right there is for for the AI, AIO pump, which doesn't look like it has a connection for that. I think it gets its power elsewhere, um, and we know it's got power because it's doing that. Um, and maybe this is why it's freaking out. It's just, it's weird. The, usually the CPU optional is the, uh, is the gray one, but on here, it's apparently, the CPU fan is the gray one. All right, so let's do F1 to continue. Do F10 to save and exit. See what happens this time. It still it still has this exclamation point on it though. As far as I can tell, it is plugged in properly, but I I don't know what what uh, I don't know what cooler this is because the person didn't bring everything over. Okay, we got video back right away, and it may be trying to boot to the Windows 11 now. That's most likely what's going to happen. It's just, I wonder about this. Why, why is there an exclamation point? And yes, I did tell the person to bring everything. Just about every time I, I tell, I make it a point to say, to say to a client, bring everything, they don't. Or they, they bring their monitor or in their keyboard and their mouse, but then they forget the stuff that I actually need. Uh, Okay, this should be Windows 11. So next, and let's do install now. Don't have a product key. And we want Windows 11 home because that's what they paid for. They've got a 25 digit code in there, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna type it in. Not until much later. Because I don't want to associate associate it with this motherboard and have this motherboard crap out. So custom install. Couldn't find any drives. Okay, so it's not Windows uh, installer is not detecting the um, the drives, even though they're detected in the BIOS. I wonder if there's a an extra um, um, what's it called. I think it's that INF file that we have to give it. Let's see. Uh, I'm going to put this down to the ground if I can. Do I have enough cable? look this up. Switch that and 
put y'all over here. Okay. Yeah, so uh, OBS 28 breaks compatibility with the Droid Cam software I use to um, project my, uh, uh, to connect my, my phone wirelessly as a camera. So we're not going to go to 28 until they fix that. Uh, all right, so we're looking for a an Asus Pro Art Z690 Creator Wi-Fi, and we're looking for drivers. Looks right. Uh, probably could use the BIOS too. So the latest version is 2004. And I want to say I saw 14 something, something in the teens on the, the client's laptop, or uh, on the client's uh, um, motherboard the way it is now. So we got LAN, we got wireless, we got audio. VGA drivers. Okay, I think this might be it. It's listed as SATA, but it's uh, it should be a driver is what we're looking for that you can give Windows um, right at the beginning. As like an installer. Let's let's look at this. Open it up. Okay, so we're going to extract it. I didn't even notice the gen, uh, the gen of the uh, the CPU. Did anyone else uh, notice? Okay, driver sixty-four bit. This may be it. I'm going to go ahead and copy all this over to the uh, to the flash drive, though. Okay, so I've got I've got the uh, the Windows 11 flash drive that we're what we're using. I'm just gonna transfer this folder over to it. Just this whole thing, and we'll browse to it and see if we can find a, a driver that'll make the uh, the one terabyte drive show up as being installable onto-able. We'll put it that way. Uh, okay, so we got that. Uh, let's do eject. Cool. Oh, you know what? That was dumb. Should, might as well go ahead and put the BIOS on here and fix the BIOS too while we've got it. Okay, so up to BIOS. And we will download it. Open up the zip. Extract it. And move it over. Okay, so that's that should be all we need to get the computer up and running. Hey Greg. Yes, Greg, thank you for prompting people. <laughs> like stuff, share it, become members, all that good stuff. Okay, so that's that's connected. Um, let me see. Let's switch. Switch back to HDMI here. And so the general procedure, once you have the drivers, um, where you can load them. Switch to POV. So it's not seeing it's not seeing a drive, right? So we would go to load driver, browse, and we would browse to our flash drive into that drivers folder, 64-bit, and see. Okay, so it it shows two possible things it can load. I'm gonna go with the first one, see what happens. So we're loading the driver. There they are, all three of them. Okay, so I'm just gonna choose the top one. Um, drive one, hit next, and it will create the partitions for us. 
Fantastic. Once we get Windows installed, um, we'll boot back into the BIOS and uh, update the driver, or sorry, up, update the BIOS um, with that same stuff. So yeah, I, I don't see see this very often, where, where Windows just doesn't see drives to, to install to, but that's generally what you have to do. You have to go to the manufacturer's website, the manufacturer of the motherboard or whatever computer it is, and get that, um, what was it, R, RST something, let me see. That's wrong. That's what I wanted. So it was down on the driver's side. Windows 11 64-bit, and it was down under SATA, which it's not SATA, but it's it's the driver that, that handles the uh, um, the accessing of, of any kind of uh, drive uh, between it and uh, and Windows. And it is called the RSTD, Rapid Storage Technology Driver. You know, that's another thing I need to put. The, uh, dun, 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 dun. you know, the more you know, I need to add that to, uh, it is what it is. And they've done studies, that you know, stuff. 60% of the time, it works every time. that there. Switch back to POV. Yeah, so it should be rebooting. Or getting close to it. Ah, 89%. It's getting there. How's everyone doing this morning? Hey Zulu. <laughs> TikTok's working for you, huh? Oh, that's great. Didn't it say those drives were in RAID? That's true. It did say that. <laughs> 60%, yep. Okay, so it's going to restart, and I think we'll let it we'll let it continue the uh, the Windows 11 install. And once we get that basically done, um, we'll reboot and do the BIOS. It did. It said it was in RAID mode, but that was apparently the default because I I cleared the CMOS on the motherboard. After we update the BIOS, that would be a good thing to go look at. Because if it is set in properly, we don't want it to be, you know, potentially in RAID. Because just, just because um, the drives are, are set up with a RAID controller doesn't mean you, you, you know, they are um, RAIDed. Uh, it's just that's what the controller is set to, to have that ability. He didn't mention that he wanted them in RAID 0 or something crazy like that. Although that may be his intent. Maybe that's why he has the 3-1 terabytes. Or RAID 5 for that matter. We could do that. I wouldn't say this is the second reboot, or maybe it's the first and I'm just wrong. Yeah, it's the second reboot. It already went through and did the starting of services, detecting of devices. 
Okay, so Windows 11 uh, insists that you give it a uh, internet connection to uh, to complete um, the setup. So let's see, work around this. All right, so we're skipping the second keyboard, and we do have to give it at least initially a um, a connection. I'm going to tell. I'm going to let it connect. Uh, let's see if I don't if I don't have internet. What does it say? Continue with limited setup. Okay. Enter your name. Um, what should we put here? I didn't ask him. Hang on a second. Let's see if I can get a hold of him. Okay, I think we'll go with Caleb. But it looks like this version of Windows uh, Windows 11 didn't absolutely insist, which is which is great. I like that. Now we're just gonna go with Caleb. He can create himself another account if he wants to. Next, and we may be reinstalling Windows anyway. Um, Turn off everything but data for diagnostics and location. That's what I do. All right, now it's creating that Caleb user account. So, so far, um, in order to get video out of the computer, um, I took out the graphics card and it didn't help. It wasn't till after I cleared the CMOS that we got video. And it that the the cooler is still has an exclamation point on it. Can anyone look up, you know, just do a Google search for all in one cooler with a exclamation point triangle? I guess I can do that. It'd be nice to know just even the manufacturer of this cooler. Um, cooler triangle exclamation point. <laughs> what does it mean on AIO or on, on AOL? Oh, did it auto correct me or did I type it wrong? AIO cooler. Hmm. So maybe it's a Corsair, because Corsair came up. Hmm. A general fault is what this says. And this is according to Corsair.com. Help. A <laughs> red triangle of death for the Corsair Elite LCD. So you may be an owner of one of Corsair. Okay, so yeah, that's what I'm seeing. Is the... Commander Core. Okay, but the description says there's there's a firmware that might be released that fixes this. Okay. Well, maybe when we, we install the Corsair software, that will get done.
in the meantime, it was reading the CPU um, temperature, or not CPU temperature, but the coolant temperature of very, very low. I think it was up to 25 last I looked. Um, okay, but we're in we're in Windows uh, we're Windows Windows 11. Um, back to POV. Okay, so hopefully that uh, that that um, exclamation point will be fixed whenever we do um, install the uh, the Corsair software. Assuming this is a Corsair cooler, which I think it probably is. Um, all right, so we're gonna restart the computer and update the BIOS on the motherboard. And after we do that, we're gonna remember to to check the uh, the RAID settings in the BIOS. <coughs> We won't forget, right? I'm totally going to forget. Okay, restarting the computer. And I'm going to press delete to get it to go into the BIOS. And we're going to update the BIOS. All right, we are in. Let's do F7 for advanced. And let's see. Let's go down to the MDV and the configuration. Uh, it doesn't really show anything. Okay. Um, until rapid storage. So non-RAID physical disks. Maybe it being in RAID mode was why Windows wouldn't detect it. CSM. Huh. There's quite a bit in here that's just grayed out. Let, let's go ahead and do, let's go to Tools, Asus Easy Flash 3 Utility. And let's see, come over here and click the BIOS and say yes please do that. It's warning about BitLocker. There's there's no BitLocker turned on. BitLocker is uh, disk encryption. And it's a good idea to decrypt your drive before you do this if it is encrypted. But um, yeah I'm hoping some of those grayed out errors, areas that shouldn't be grayed out will be fixed by this. Yeah, I'm with you, Zulu. I mean, it's it's really not worth it. All all the extra crap you have to worry about breaking. I mean, it really is just two 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 new things, but it's it's two things that you have to worry about breaking. That is just unnecessary. A, a good liquid or a good air cooler is um, within a couple of degrees of the same cooling as the best uh, all in one. So what, what, what we're doing here is we're upgrading the BIOS on the motherboard. And the BIOS is the basic input-output system. Without a BIOS, um, nothing could, you know, interface with, uh, with the hardware. And whenever you're doing this, you basically just, w once it starts, just leave it alone. Don't, uh, don't touch the computer and don't disconnect or reconnect anything while it's doing it. Just you gotta be patient with it. Mod sister. Yeah. Air air coolers are, are the way to go. I mean if 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 you have a, if you have an issue where if you want to build like a really tiny computer and a, a, a good sized air cooler just isn't um, isn't a thing that would fit in it, build a bigger computer. <laughs> I mean, 
yeah, that, that's my way of thinking. And, unless you're on a submarine or something, and you, you, you really don't have the space for a regular-sized computer, um, build a bigger computer. And they don't have to be this this big. This thing's huge. It's heavy too. It's a nice case and all, but it's it's kind of on the big side. Yeah, so we're going from 1403 to 2004. Hopefully it's got some good updates in it that fixes uh, the problems we've seen so far. Okay, Nevitz, thanks for the info. So Nevitz says to um, install the IQ software and or the Commander software to update the firmware. Okay. That cut on my thumb has stopped bleeding. It's basically like a, cape, uh, a paper cut. It's very thin. Didn't bleed very much. <laughs> it says it's processing update area five. Successful system will reset. Okay, so. You can either not do anything or click OK and it resets within, within about five seconds, it, it seems like. So now we have to wait for the video to come back. And this can be like a 20 second thing or a several minute thing. And it's not unusual for, for the computer to uh, reboot several times or even turn itself off for a few seconds and turn itself back on. Uh, but I mean really just don't touch it. Let, let it do its thing. Hey, Mayor. It turned itself off. I heard it. And it's coming back on. Cool, Jordan Facts. Yeah, don't mind lurkers. Always nice to hear from you, but uh, if, if, you're, if anyone's just watching, that's okay, too. Just... Um, Subscribe and click that bell and smash that button and all those things, you know. And we're still waiting for video. Hmm. I'm not sure what to work on next once we get this thing up and running. I'm thinking maybe the uh, the MSI laptop that needs a new battery would be the next thing we'll go to. Should be fairly straightforward. Taking screws out, taking off the bottom, locating the battery, swapping it. It turned itself off again, and it's coming back on. <laughs> drop kick the like button yeah oh then at some point we should put back in the graphics card um, pulled it out in order to get uh, rule it out as a as a poss uh, possible point of failure I'm sure it's fine Okay, here comes video. I can tell by the blue light at the bottom right of the, uh, the screen. Yeah, okay. So, is it going to boot into Windows? What's it going to do? I'll try pressing delete on the keyboard so we can get it to... BIOS is updating. It's not done yet. Stop touching stuff, damn it. I did. I pressed the delete button. Do not shut down or reset the system to prevent system boot up failure. Okay, will not. You will leave it alone. And it turns itself off again. And it's coming back on. Maybe that's the last one.
I think we'll just let it boot into Windows to verify that it's it's really done before we try going to the BIOS again. Alright, got video again. Aha, here we go. Okay, this is good. So, uh, you get this after a successful BIOS flash just about every time whenever you um, have a computer that you built yourself with a, you know, Asus or a Gigabyte motherboard or one of the other manufacturers. Uh, so it's still, it's still configured in RAID. It is an i9-12900K, which I kind of thought it would be, but... Alright, so F1 to go into BIOS. And let's see if some of those grayed out areas are, are available now. F7 for uh, advanced mode. And let's go over to advanced and see what's in NVMe configuration. Uh, remarkably, still nothing. Um, let's see. There's the SATA stuff. So we don't have any SATA devices. What's this? What's this? Okay, trusted computing. So the TPM's on. Let's go to boot and secure boot. And it's on custom, okay. So secure boot is, appears to be on. The TPM is on. Um, secure boot stuff. CSM CSM's off, that's good. Secure boot's good. But where's the where's the raid stuff? Okay, here we go. So we could create a raid volume. But we're not going to. Uh, I wonder if there's an option to turn off raid. Not that it would be an advantage or anything, but I'm used to being able to see, like, turning right off. Okay, but we're going to save changes and... Actually, no, let's, uh, let's, let's go back to regular mode and turn on XMP. Because he has DDR5, and this will have it running at 6,000 megahertz. Right now it's at 4,800 megahertz. And there's the timings. 36, 36, 36, 96 at 1.35 volts. Okay. Is anyone screaming at me to do something in the BIOS in chat? What monitor is this? My monitor you all are looking at is a very old Asus monitor. It's, an, it's one of the early cheap IPS monitors that was available. It's probably 15 or 16 years old. It still works. Probably not the greatest monitor, but it still works. Um, post the <laughs> Nope, save and exit. Okay, will do. Okay, so yeah, there there's all the uh, the changes I made, which is basically turn on the uh, the memory overclocking. Okay, I got to go in about an hour and forty-five minutes, so I don't think we're gonna get all the computers uh, on this stream. I, I might, I might start up another stream after I get back, but we'll see. But hey, what happened to the video? So we enabled um, XMP. We haven't got video back yet.
What keyboard do you have? Says uh, Davey. I've got a Logitech keyboard and a Microsoft keyboard. I got a couple of them. Simon says, should the AI pump be reporting a speed operation slash operation in the BIOS like the PWM fans that are connected to? I would think so. I would think that's what that single line connected to the CPU would do. Hey, cold heart. But yeah, we, uh, we've lost video after enabling um, the RAM overclocking. You'll be able to know that the RGB is still working. The exclamation point, the triangle exclamation point, is gone from the AIO cooler screen. But yeah, no video. It's not good. I'm going to try pressing the power button just quickly. Okay, it didn't turn off. I'm going to reset it just with the reset button. like we've dropped some frames going to YouTube. Um, is the is the stream choppy for, for y'all at all? Or has it been during this stream at all? Uh, so if, if the CPU temperature is shooting up in the BIOS, it probably... Um, really is getting getting as hot as it's showing um what uh what what um what celsius is is it going up to it would be the, the first question Buffering a bit in the last minute, says Simon. Okay. Yeah, I got to notice um, on YouTube, um, on the streaming site, uh, that it wasn't see, seeing enough information. And um, it's dropped 869, nice, frames since the beginning of the stream. Uh, maybe it's just a temporary thing. Okay, well, we're not getting video um, on the computer. Which was not great, but let's try to do, doing a cold boot. So I'm holding down the power button to get it to turn off. All right, it's off. Turn it back on. Okay, I think video's coming back. Yeah, we got video back. So it posted in safe mode. So we're doing F1 on the keyboard to go back into the BIOS. The XMP is still enabled. Still sees the drive, still sees the RAM, still sees the install of Windows. 
CPU temp is 34 degrees, which is great. Um, CPU fan is is showing it's spinning, so it is picking up the uh, the fan spinning for the CPU, which is good. Um, yeah, and the exclamation point on the um, on the cooler is uh, is gone, so I'm I'm not sure what to think of that. Uh, but yeah, let's uh, F10 and save and exit. We didn't make any changes, so it should now try and boot um, with the uh, the faster RAM settings. Let's see if we get video again. don't have a good feeling about the video. I don't think it's coming back. Yeah, I was about to do a CMOS reset, but a, a cold boot got it working. Yeah, and Grizz says especially with four DIMMs installed. I, I don't see many computers, brand new computers, with four DIMMs. Um, Usually it's it's two, and uh, yeah, it could be a RAM issue. Um, yeah, it's it's not going to give us video back. I'm very excited, a little smoke for the uh, the seven thousand series CPUs from AMD. Uh, right now, the the motherboards that you need to support them are too expensive. Um, I, I if I understand right, maybe yesterday or today or sometime soon, the um, the lower end chipset motherboards will start being released. And they should be closer to like a little under two hundred dollars, whereas right now I think the cheapest one you can get is like five hundred bucks for a motherboard to go along with the seven thousand series, and that's too expensive. Um, very few people need a, a expensive motherboard like that. So I think a lot of people are are waiting. So I'm going to cold cold boot this thing again. Or I'm going to try um, setting it to non XMP and see if we can get a a good boot out of it. Oh, and someone mentioned uh, about the ARC graphics cards. Um, they, they're interesting. It, it's the first generation from Intel, and um, supposedly, apparently, they work well with newer games. It's the older games with, where, where the performance isn't that great. Um, but um, I think it was Linus of Linus Tech Tips. He, him and his guys did a live stream, like two and a half hour live stream, where they go through and they play a lot of the games. And even the games, you know, it, the older games where it doesn't run as well on, it's still pushing out like 200 frames per second in most of them. And, you know, unless you have a monitor that can show those frames anyway, if 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 it's an older game that you want to play, and, yeah, you could buy an NVIDIA or an AMD graphics card for more money, and it would give you more frames, like 500 frames per second, you're not going to see those. So if the, uh, the Intel one um, plays current games well with good frame rates and plays older games with crazy high frame rates that you can't even see anyway unless you have a... A really high um, refresh rate monitor. I mean, that's not really a downside as far as I'm concerned. If you can't see the extra 200 frames per second because you don't have a monitor that can show it, who cares? So yeah, it's interesting. All right, F1 to continue. All right, I'm going to turn off XMP. So it's going to run the RAM at its. Uh, 4800 megahertz per second. So F10 to save and exit. So we're switching back all the RAM timings to auto. And we're clicking OK. Um, I haven't um, I haven't run into this in a little while, but on some systems, if you if you fully populate the RAM, all the RAM slots, you then also have to give the RAM extra um, voltage to make it work right. Of course, that's that's kind of old information. I, I don't I don't think I've run into it on a on a Z six ninety or any any of the the more current motherboards. So I don't know if that would you know be a fix. Yes, the thirty sixty is more expensive. It's um so the thirty sixty is what they're what they're competing with or what they're trying to compete with, um. With the um, I think the A seven fifty and A seven seventy. Um, 
And on newer games, supposedly, it's uh, it's on par with them, um, even though the uh, the thirty sixty is more expensive. But the thirty sixty has ex extra things in it like um, um, AI upresing, and uh, that's not the name of it. But it, it basically uses AI to to make um, games uh, play uh, play fast at um, perceivably higher resolutions. And uh, I don't I don't know that. Um, the, the Intel one has that good of a version of that AI upscaling. We got video back. So I'm gonna leave it like that for a little bit and um, we'll see if we can figure out how to get the RAM to run at uh, the 6,000 megahertz speed. But at this point, I, I really just want this thing to give me video so I can update drivers and stress test it otherwise and figure out if that damn cooler is gonna come back with the it's back with the triangle. Okay, so yeah, the the the, the all-in-one cooler on its screen is back to showing a uh, exclamation point triangle, which apparently, according to a YouTube video, I found when I did a search, is fixed with a firmware upgrade for the um, for the cooler. So we can go try and get that. But we need to get this thing internet, so we can go get drivers and stuff. Ethernet down here. What did she say? 1.30? Yeah. Hey Google, set a alarm for 1 p.m. 1 p.m. Set. When the alarm goes off, I gotta go. About an hour and a half from now. Within Okay, so your 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 cooler, your CPU temperature is jumping up to eighty degrees. Uh, what what CPU do you have, and what cooler do you have, and what motherboard do you have? I'm gonna let it get the Armory Crate because that'll get the the drivers it needs for for the motherboard. Uh, let's go to go to Edge, and then we'll get out of Edge as soon as we can, and go get Chrome. All right, quit out of that. All right, so uh, that's the wrong keyboard. N-I-N-I-T-E dot com is where we're going. We're going to get Chrome. If you don't know Ninite, this is a really great uh, website. Anything you see here, you can check. And when you come down and click get your Ninite and let it run, it will download and install all the programs you checked. Which, I mean, there's just tons of stuff on here. So check out ninite.com if you haven't already. All right, installing Chrome, let's close out of Edge. And we'll unpin it from the taskbar. Close out, Armory Crate's going. So we lost video, so that, that's, that's Windows 10 updating drivers or Windows 11. Any version of Windows uh, past 8.1 will will start automatically getting drivers for stuff. Okay, so did it really get done installing? Huh, it's got a separate window. Okay, let's go to taskbar settings. I'm gonna turn off chat and widgets and task view. I'm gonna turn the center to left where it's supposed to be. See, I understand. Yes, let's do that. So you have an Asus H610 motherboard with a stock cooler. I think you're probably fine. Uh, with a stock cooler and a 12400F, it will get pretty damn hot. But going up into, what did you say, 80? Jump to 80 degrees. Uh, what do you have in the computer do? Um, what's it doing when it when it jumps up to 80 degrees? Because if you've got it running uh, some stress tester or a um, a high uh, high CPU using game, that's that would be about right with a stock cooler. 
Okay, so they've changed the installer for the Asus um, Armory Crate. It's doing things a little differently. Yes, it is Windows 11. Um, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, some some new games, uh, especially the online ones, they they require Windows 11 for like anti-cheat and stuff. Sitting in the BIOS, it goes that high. That's not great. If 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 it's sitting in the BIOS and going that high, um, maybe take it off and um, reinstall it. Maybe it's uh, it's just got like one corner up. Sometimes that'll happen. Um, I heard about the GTA 6 leaks. I, I think I looked at a, a couple of um, screenshots of them or, or quick things, and it looks terrible, of course, but it's, it's an alpha build of a game, so it's going to look awful. <laughs> as far as you're going... Well, what about Windows 12? It's coming out in a couple of years. There's always going to be new versions of Windows. I really hope they were telling the truth when they said that Windows 10 would be the last version and then there would just be updates that they would do. It wasn't true. Now we have Windows 11 and Windows 12 is coming in a couple of years. Yeah, I, I would say, yeah, take the cooler off, um, put it back on, maybe replace the thermal compound. Um, if you can, you know, spend spend some money and get yourself a better cooler. Yeah, Simon, that, that's that's. Yeah. Most likely, just not uh, not all the way on. With with the stock coolers, you have to. I don't know if I crap. Do I have one? I don't have one. The 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 stock coolers from Intel. Um, there's little plastic little plastic things that have to go through the back of the motherboard. Whenever you put that on, um, just look at the back of the motherboard and make sure that they're all the way through and like biting into the motherboard, all four of them. Like right now, one of them might be off a little bit. Um, and for, um, go on YouTube and do a search for reinstalling Intel stock cooler. And it'll give you some some good pointers because you have to rotate um, rotate each each of the four um, push pins so you can then take them off and then you re-rotate them back where they were before you put them back on. But w watch a video about it. It's it's you, you should be able to figure it out. Okay, two to three years. Yeah, that sounds about right for Windows 12. Is pre-applied thermal paste good enough? Yeah, for the most part. It's, I mean... Uh, let's see, insulation can complete... Reopen the armory crate. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, we're skipping through. We're not doing the user center. All right, so we need tools. I'm switching over to utility to uninstall them or uncheck them back to driver. So it's going to get this stuff. Apparently has a Marvel land driver. Huh? Okay. So that'll that'll install all the drivers for for the motherboard into Windows 11. Um oh yeah, let's let's fire up Chrome and go see about um so it's it's Corsair Commander stuff, right? Corsair Commander Pro.
or is it software? Because Commander Pro may be a product as well. Uh, IQ Commander Pro Smart RGB Lighting and Fan. Is that what we're doing here? Hmm. Maybe it's the IQ software. Yeah, let's let's install the IQ software. No, I don't want to do that. I want you to let me download the stuff. Really? Okay, skip and start download. There we go. 1.1 gigabytes for the IQ software. That's that's big. <laughs> Mounting the cooler on top of the CPU properly, yeah, is is what you should. Yeah, I I agree. The um, the quality of the thermal paste is most likely good if it's pre-applied. Getting the getting the cooler on there properly is the is the most important thing. Okay, so it is the IQ software. Uh, yeah, let's do that. Why is this grayed out? I will decide later. Oh, it's grayed out to the point where I couldn't even read it. Share usage to... yeah, let, let's share with Corsair. <laughs> Worst software ever for the IQ. It's big. I mean, I... I, I mean, it... It controls, like, the... Uh, the RGB lighting and a couple other things. I don't think it needs to be as big as it is. But then what do I know? Maybe they got a good reason. They probably don't. It's probably just too big. <laughs> we are, uh, what, what are we doing? Dan plays. We're uh, we're getting a, a client's computer up and running. Um, when he brought it to me, it wasn't giving video. Um, it looks like clearing the CMOS uh, got it up and running. Okay, so congratulations. Let's install or update or launch the IQ software. So supposedly this this IQ software is going to have a firmware update that fixes the issue with the exclamation point on the screen. Update available already. Yeah, let's let's go do that. Not responding. Wonderful. Uh, it's still launching. Okay, let's see what the screen's up to. It's still got an exclamation point on it. Update failed. IQ detected an error during the update progress or process, and stopped the download. Okay. Let's see what happens if we change it to rainbow. Are you rainbowing? Yeah, it's kind of rainbowing. Still has an exclamation point on it. Okay, so we got home. Uh, Asus motherboard. Okay. Hardware screen. Device settings. Aha, here we go. Firmware. Check for updates. Update failed. Oh, we've lost internet. Why have we lost internet? It's probably because we're, that, that may have been why the update failed. The, um, the drivers um, are likely being, uh, being updated. Okay, internet's back. Uh, let's try that again. So close, check for updates. We have the latest version. LCD screen firmware, check for updates. We have the latest version. Still an exclamation point. Force update or browse firmware. Hmm. But it says we have the latest version. 
hardware lighting, screen setup. Okay, so it's it's it looks like it's a H115i Elite. And it's supposed to be showing the coolant temperature right now. It's not. Let's go back to the home screen. Does static red work? Yeah, that changed it to red. Let's disable scenes. Asus motherboard setting lighting effect. Yeah, still, still has an exclamation point on it. What do we got for alerts? So as you can set up alerts. can change what it's supposed to be showing. I'm not sure what to think about that. I'm not sure what to think about the exclamation point at this point. Alright, so we're finishing and restarting later. Probably don't need to reboot. Let's go back to the IQ software. So if if this is a So according to this, it, it means there's a uh, an issue that's fixed by uh, a firmware update, but the firmware is update, updated, so something else is going on. Um, IQ software updates. And the update and updates just failing for the IQ software. Okay. Um, all right. Back over here. So. So it's a H, one fifty I. Elite is that it? Yeah. Elite doesn't say Capellix, so let's take that off. And we're looking for an exclamation mark. What does that mean? We already read this. It means it's a general error. Push down the 24 pin or the 20 pin that goes to the, make sure it's fully seated. It looks fully seated to me. Um, Could be damaged. Great. Give the LED cap a push to make sure it's full contact with the 8 pin. Ooh, okay. So there's, it's an LED cap that maybe is just off a little bit. Feels all the way down to me. If you have another PC, connect. I'm not connecting it to another PC. No. Uh, make sure you have the latest firmware. We do. Unplug the PSU from the outlet. Press the power button several times to ensure the power is fully discharged. Then plug the system back in and reboot. Okay. Uh, as last resort, do a full uninstall of the IQ software. Remove registry keys. It, it was it was showing the exclamation point before we even installed the software, so I don't think that's going to help. Hmm. Well, not helpful. Okay. And it's obviously communicating with the with the software because we are able to to change the um, the lights on it. 
I'm going to shut it down and um, check that connection. <laughs> Caesar, maybe the good old restart. Well, I just shut it down, so it will be restarted. Read the last part. What was the last part? Oh, if you ever persist, call. <laughs> call Corsair, say, what the hell, man? I got it connected right. Head mounted. It could be a, a reseating of this uh, this this cable into the fan controller that fixes it. I mean, it could be something that simple. Stupid. So this is the fan controller. It was just stuffed down in down here. Oh, you know what? It doesn't look like it's it's all the way pushed in, so they might have they might have a good point. So it was out just a little bit. It wasn't much. Aha! Yeah, it wasn't all it wasn't all the way in. It was real close. Okay. Coming back on. What's it gonna do? It's gonna give us an error. Look at that pretty RGB. No exclamation point so far. And we're getting video coming up on the screen here. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, that uh, that connector into the. Uh, into the RGB slash fan controller just wasn't all the way in. So some of the pins were connected and some weren't. Yay indeed, right? Don't you just love it when a plan comes together? They've done studies, you know. 60% of the time it works every time. Damn straight. Well, what else? We put the graphics card back in. That's what we do next. And if that works, should I should I try and deal with the RAM not running at 6,000 megahertz? That would be an interesting call to uh, to Corsair, Cors or not Corsair, um, Asus support, and ask them about that. See if they've run into that and what they uh, they might recommend. In my experience. Um, with having all the uh, the RAM sticks populated in the past, um, giving the RAM controller more voltage um, made it work better and stably. But I don't know if that's if that's going to be true with the DDR5 stuff. Michael Scott says Nespresso. Cool. It, it's kind of overclocking, John. Um, so it, it uh, the RAM is uh, running at 4,800 megahertz right now, and it, it kind of is overclocking to have it run at uh, 6,000 megahertz. Make sure it's certified with that board. That's another possibility. It, uh, it, it may just not be certified with this motherboard, and maybe a future BIOS update would fix it. It's not the end of the world if we can't turn it on. Um, still going to be a really nice performing computer. All right, let's turn it off and we'll plug the graphics card back in. I'm going to hold down shift to get it to really turn off. Shift on the keyboard when telling it to, to turn off will have it completely shut down instead of going into a, a hybrid sleep.
Notice how it's taking a little bit longer to shut down? It's because I told it to really shut down. Right. Uh, let's disconnect some of this stuff. Get it up on the desk. And I think I think it's safe to put the back cover back on. The rest of it seems right. This, this right here is what cut me. This this part right here. I guess, no, it is metal. It feels a little on the floppy side, but it's metal. Yeah, and the client had plugged in power right here. Um, that doesn't need to be plugged in. This right here, I looked at the motherboard, and it's for extra power to be sent to the uh, PCI Express slots but not a requirement. Okay, so whenever you're plugging in a graphics card, the, uh, the face plate will go to the left of the motherboard's edge, but you don't want it to go to the outside of the case. So that's mainly what you should focus on, is just getting the, it to the left of the motherboard's edge, and then here into the slot. Basically right, and then push. And it's in. Yeah, and this is a RTX 3060. It only has a only needs eight eight pins. So when you're connecting PCI Express power, you want to uh, put the six and the two together, kind of like that. Stick them in, and they only go one way. There's a there's a notch that this right here plugs into. Okay, graphics card in, power down, good. And uh, we are missing a thumb screw. Where'd it go? They do like to roll. Yeah, I can't see it. I'll grab them another one. Good match. Seems like the, the camera's too bright. The exposure is set too high. Very bright, isn't it? Let me check that. Set to medium. Right, some screws are down. down. <sighs> Alright, I guess back on the floor. Oh yeah, it, it does have a uh it does have two Ethernets. I guess one's Marvel and the other's probably Intel. HDMI. Uh, 
HDMI in, power back on. Okay, so assuming this comes up and goes back into Windows, I guess what we'll do is some stress tests. Make sure the system's stable. No video yet. Here it comes. Yeah. Okay, go back to tripod, tripod mount, mounted mode. It is a big rig. Yeah, it's heavy too. I'm, I'm trying to be real careful of my back. Months ago, I, I bent the wrong way, swiveling with a particularly heavy computer, and I was pretty messed up for a couple of weeks. All right, uh, Chrome. Uh, I'm not going to deal with defaulting Chrome into Windows 11. Um, so we need Hardware Info 64. To monitor temperatures and frequencies and stuff. Extract it. Let's go get that Intel burn-in software. It's updating the graphics driver. That's why it went black. So it'll, it's going to go get a copy of uh, the NVIDIA drivers, <clears throat> but it's probably going to be a couple of months old, so we're going to need to uh, go get the, uh, the newest from NVIDIA uh, as well. All right, getting the burn-in test. The Intel burn-in test, um, what it does is it puts like a maximum load on the CPU, kind of worst case scenario, get it as hot as possible. Um, and let's get, uh, let's go get Furmark, go get the furry donut to test the GPU. Okay, so run the burn and test. Unable to start. Oh, it, it needs uh, it needs some .NET stuff. Let's go get that. All right, Furmark. We'll get it installed. Pull the microphone a little closer. I shouldn't be getting up and down so much with these laptops that are coming next. Don't need the release notes. Okay, so there goes the .NET update. Come back here and run Hardwind Fo 64. Sensors only. Okay, so that got done. If 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 hardware info 64 says this that it uh, it's determined that there's a problem with a particular uh, sensor, just um, don't show this again. Do not monitor this sensor. Doesn't mean there's a problem with the board. It's trying to it's trying to uh, to access. It just means that it, uh, it doesn't know to ha how to access access it properly, and it'll likely crash hardware info uh, hard hardware info 64 if you try to force it. Uh, okay, so let's go back and run that Intel burn-in software again. Hopefully it'll work now. Yeah, stress level maximum. I forget who told me about this. Was it Chris? Forget who. Start. Okay, so 
Hardware Info 64 shows us our CPU temperature, and it should start going up here. Yeah, it's up to 47. And if we come down, it shows us uh, lots of stuff, lots of different um, temperatures and voltages and frequencies and all kinds of stuff like that. Okay, so that's going. Let's start the CPU stress test at the same time. And there's the furry donut. It just sits there and renders a, a furry donut. Okay. The system's still really quiet. CPU temperature's up to 47 degrees. Uh, let's see. Let's run task manager. Go to performance. Yeah, so it's at 100% usage, so it's it's putting it to good work. And there's the GPU, and it's at 57 degrees Celsius. Running for a mark. 64 gigabytes of RAM in this thing. Okay, CPU is up to 60, 60 degrees C, but that's great. I mean, I don't think it'll go past 70 with this cooler, but we'll see. OCCT power too. I remember, I remember Oct. They they had a they had a CPU stress tester that I've used before. <laughs> okay, you 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 you're getting the uh, the head mount thing from uh, from Amazon Cool. Yeah, it it works great. This is actually my second one that I've had. Let me show y'all. Um just here in the camera. So it uh it it um the uh the suction cups go on the screen and then it has this that wraps around the phone and then just goes on your head without a phone at the moment so yeah so that's that's all it is it works great the last one it just straight up broke the uh, the plastic here in the middle just snapped um, and I thought about super gluing it and I was like nah it's probably not gonna hold um, I bought another one for 20 bucks uh, but it it lasted a good oh at least at least five years up to 69 degrees C and I, I'm, I'm starting to hear the fans rev up a little bit yeah but I I, th I think the system's gonna be okay I'm just gonna let it sit there and, and stress test for however long I have with it I'm sure the client wants their computer back as soon as possible I'm, I'm going to stress test it for a good, you know, three or four hours, though, before I give it back to them. Oh, I think I found the other um, um, thumb screw. I just set it over here. Okay. Even swap. Even trade. All right. Uh, let's move on to, uh, to a laptop, shall we? Where's my battery at, anyway? Battery's at 66% on the phone. Okay. Uh, MSI laptop needs a new battery. So the client uh, called me up and told me, you know, it works as long as you have it plugged in to AC power. But when you unplug it within a couple of minutes, the computer turns itself off, which generally means that the battery's just... Uh, not doing a good job so I went ahead and ordered them a replacement um, let me switch to head mounted mode here what about the RAM? I'm not going to worry about the RAM too much um, that's, that's probably going to be a conversation with uh, with Asus support to see if uh, 
they can make the RAM run at the 6000 megahertz. I imagine it's going to take another BIOS upgrade. But that would be that would be a call to uh, Asus tech support would be the next step on that. So this is it, this uh, MSI laptop, and it is a, let me see, model number is an MS16K2. It's also called a GS63VR. Um, and I already confirmed, um, I, I powered this thing off with it connected to, to AC adapter, went into the BIOS and just disconnected the AC adapter, and with a couple of minutes it turns off. So should just be a matter of taking all the screws out of the bottom, which will give me access to the battery, but we'll see. That screw does not want to come out. Let's see if I can remagnetize this. I bought a magnetizer demagnetizer years ago. Basically, you just kind of stick it in the hole and go in and out. That's what they said. Trying to be all inclusive here. Someone's been in this before because the factory seal um, sticker is broken. I think the battery's about to die on this uh, this screwdriver. Need to swap it out. I think. This this bottom is just peeling up on its own. Okay. Yeah, it's it's been pried open. You can kind of see the pry marks here. There's the battery. Looks like it might be a little, a little bit expanded. Let me see. I don't see any screws holding it. Right, let's open up the replacement. Yeah, I think I think it looks a little swollen. The next question is, the battery I bought that says it's uh, it's compatible with this computer, is it actually right? Kind of looks right. Looks right shape. Connector in the right spot. So yeah, just like that. Okay, let's pull out the connector, and let's see, will this thing just come up? Yeah, it's, it's, it's adhesed down a little bit. Some kind of double-sided tape, most likely. Okay, and... Nice. Okay. That's in. And just 
stick the battery in like that. Yeah, that's all the way in. Okay. Running a hard drive in here. I wonder if it also has a solid state drive. I didn't even look at that. Alright, I'm just going to kind of halfway put the bottom on. adapter plugged in where's the power on this thing over here okay let's see what happens power button is over here all right coming on we got video And it's booting into Windows. It must have a solid state drive. It's making a noise. It does show a battery. And it looks like it's plugged in. Okay, well let's shut this down. Oh, I'm, it's it's not this. This this, this um, <laughs> having this computer turn on uh, overdrove the battery in my uh, UPS to the point where it complained. So that noise wasn't coming from the laptop. But the battery's in; it's working. Oh, and I was I, I was I was in the process of saying it definitely has a solid state drive because it booted into Windows way faster than it would if it had a hard drive. Okay, so now it's just a matter of putting all the screws back in. And this thing's good to go. Yeah, because right, right now my UPS is also driving uh, the power to, to this guy down here. Yeah, it's probably got a, um, like a 256 or a 512 gigabyte solid state drive in addition to the hard drive. sure the, the bottom's clipped in where it needs to be clipped. Yeah, that's good. And power adapter. And yeah, this thing's good to go. Set it back where it was. Okay, let's see. Let's do this, uh, this old HP. What they told me is, when they turned it on, it's giving them some kind of a boot error. Okay. So we're getting escape for start menu, but it should just kick over and try and boot to, uh, to, boot to Windows. Ordinarily it would happen before now though. So th there's a little bit of a delay here. Oh, by the way, the the computer we're stress testing, it's, it's doing good. And the the cooler is keeping it in the mid-60s. The The system uh, is, is getting, it's noticeably louder than it was before, but it's nowhere near, like, loud, if you know what I mean. And that's that's with the side off. So it'll be a little quieter with the, uh, with, with the side on. Okay, boot device not found. Please install an operating system on your hard drive. Hard disk 3F0 is what it says. Okay. 
F2 for system diagnostics. Let's go F1 for system information. So it's a oof, an AMD E processor, not great. Four gigabytes of RAM. It's not showing a drive there, but I don't think it's supposed to. Um, let's run a hard disk check. Hard disk not exists, so the hard drive failed. Unless it like some somehow became disconnected in the laptop, which is not likely. So yeah, drive failure. Power button to turn off. Holding power button to turn off. Excuse me. Okay, so five seconds got to turn off. Hard drive in here should be under here. So we need to eject the battery, which will give us access to this screw. So there's the four gigabytes of RAM. We could put an extra four gigabytes of RAM in here. There's the Wi-Fi adapter. And then this screw will allow us to take this off and there's the hard drive. Looks like two screws holding it in when there should be four. So missing screws here and here, not that that really makes a big difference, but they are missing. Okay, so a little bit of plastic here you can use to pull up. And then there's a little adapter that runs over to and plugs into the motherboard. But yeah, there's the hard drive. So it's a 500 gigabyte Momentus from Seagate. Let's, I'm gonna I'm gonna plug this in to my diagnostic computer. But actually, let me let me check something, and we'll we'll switch to a tripod for maybe a little bit. Okay, so there's the screen, and my diagnostic computer is is hooked up um, to this monitor. And I was running a, a scan to try and find some files on a drive that failed, or is failing. Um, let's see. I need to go to volumes and see if any of these work. Uh, quick scan. Nah, it's going to take forever. Let's see. Let's save the scan results so I can come back to it in the future. Uh, let's see. Signature files. JPEGs. So it's, it's got 1.13 gigabytes worth of JPEGs that it found. Um... along with some office documents. See, I wonder if I can just save all of these. Recover. And we will recover to the F drive, which is my E drive and a folder called backups. And we'll call it Abby. Recover. Okay, so it'll it'll start doing that. Um, so while that's happening, I'm going to plug in the drive that wasn't seen by the laptop and see if it's seen by this computer. It is spinning, that's good. Always a good sign when a drive spins. Well, um, Bruce, the, uh, the, the, the laptop didn't even see the drive. It said it, it, it did not have a drive that it could see. Um, so this PC, and it's not being 
it's not being seen as a, an accessible drive in Windows here. I'm going to right click on Start and go to Disk Management and see if maybe it shows up as a a raw drive or something like that. So this is this right here is the hundred. It's a 160 gigabyte drive that I also have plugged in, um, and the rest of this is my drives. Although there is an external SSD F. What is that? Oh yeah, I have that plugged in too. So it's it's not it's not seeing the 500 gigabyte uh, momentous drive there. I'm right clicking. We're going to go to the device manager and see if it's there. So that's my C drive. Um, that's something else. I have three one terabyte drives in there that are in RAID five mode and they're seen and there's the the 160 so it's not seeing the clients drive from this uh, from this laptop it's just uh, it, I don't think that's it's gonna be recoverable and I already talked to them about putting another drive in the computer so what I'm gonna do is um, we're gonna put a, a new 500 gigabyte drive which I believe I have yes so it's a uh, crucial MX500 and the client was mostly worried about um, music files he's a he's a DJ um, so he'll have to re-download his music there's I'm afraid there's not much way um, much way around it um, I'll I'll try and recover software for or recover files from this but if it's not even being seen by windows at all it's it's not gonna it's not gonna be good so the the files on this can be gotten to it's just at this point it's beyond the um the software recovery options uh, it would have to be sent to a data recovery place that can open it up and replace um maybe a controller trip in 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 this thing but that goes at it's like minimum is like 900 bucks uh, to, to get data off of a drive in that case I kind of doubt he'll want to spend that much money for music that he can just go download again. Yes, it's a pain in the ass and it'll take a long time, but it can be done. All right. Um, all right, let's switch back to head-mounted mode for, for a minute. Yes, it will speed up the computer. With, with the... Um, with the E1 processor in it, it's not going to be a fast computer, but it, this will make it better. I'm kind of surprised he was being a DJ using this thing. With how uh, how slow that is, let's see if we can get him a, a cheap RAM upgrade too. So it's, I believe that's DDR3. So you can see should be DDR3. Yeah, I'm not going to take it out. We'll just put in a DDR3. All right, that's DDR4. These are DDR3. So I got twos, two, and a four. Okay. I didn't talk to him about a RAM upgrade, so if he doesn't want to pay the money for this four gigabytes of DDR3, I can pop it back up, uh, out real easy. But I'm, I'm thinking if I tell him you like 10 or 15 bucks, something like that for the RAM upgrade, which I, if off the top of my head, I think that's a fair price for four gigabytes of DDR3 for a laptop. He'll probably say, yeah, it's a good idea. Thanks for doing that. All right. Let's get this thing open. We need to take it out of this little bracket and move it over. Now this is missing a, a screw too. Again, not really a problem, but pretty obvious someone was in here. Yeah, there's missing two screws holding the drive in. 
Okay, so what you want to do whenever you uh, take a drive out and are replacing it, put the, uh, the new new drive in the same orientation as far as like the, uh, the connectors so that when you take out the old, which is adhesed, it's easy just to move over the new and have it in the right orientation. Oh, come on. It would help if I turn the screw the right way. Yeah, I think he'll like it too. That's why I'm just going ahead and doing it. Double the RAM for an extra 10 to 15 bucks is a good deal. Since he's already paying me to get the computer up and running anyway, especially, you know. Okay, so plug in the little adapter thingy that connects to the motherboard. And drive down. And then I relocate the screws. Put one in each corner. Alright, um, that goes on second. So this, you kind of stick these down into the laptop. Bend it around and down. Okay. Same thing with this guy. In. Battery in. And he didn't bring me a, a power adapter. That's an HP, pretty standard one. It's a blank drive, so we're going to need to plug in a copy of Windows 10, which I have on here. Power on, and it probably will just boot to the installer, but I need to get a, grab a power adapter. I believe those are bells. Here's an HP with the correct size. 65 watt adapter is probably all it needs. Wrong side. Yeah, and it's booting to the Windows 10 installer. All right, back to tri tripod mount. Nice rack. What are you talking about, John? All right, let's see. Push this back a little bit. Get the tripod in there. All right. Trackpad? Trackpad does not work. Okay. All right, let's up a mouse then. There we go. Next, install now. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Yes. No, th those, those were a, a big improvement. Um, before I bought those, I was I just had um, bags of adapters and cables and things like that in just plastic bags. And let me see, there's still two up there. See them up top? I, I used to have bags. And you see the the screws there the coming out of the walls? I would just hang bags on that, which it worked great, but it looks horrible. Uh, when when Abby uh, when Abby saw that, she's like, "We need to find something a little bit nicer." So got those and got some more over there. So much much improvement in, in the uh, organization and look of the place. All right. Um, don't have a key. And I'm going to say that this came with Windows Home. Um, so Windows 10 Home is what I'm choosing. So this computer came with Windows 7 Home. But uh, I'm sure it's been upgraded to Windows 10. 
custom install and there's the drive next and it will handle setting up the the partitions for me the uh, the computer with the core i9 processor is still in the mid 60s it's going from like 62 to 67 and you know around there but the the cooler's doing a great job and Furmark is plugging away it's fine yeah Caleb will be relieved that his computer is working and the only remaining issue is the RAM's not running at uh, at 6000 megahertz but that's a very minor thing that will most likely be fixed with a, a future BIOS upgrade Uh, Mr. Teji, I tried that. I, I took his hard drive from the from the laptop uh, that we're that you see right now, plugged it into my diagnostic computer, and it wasn't seen there. So it is spinning up, but it's not recognized. Not even in device manager. And um, if it's not seen in device manager, it's not going to be seen by recovery software. So at this point, it's a uh, it's going to be a hardware level uh, recovery, which I don't think he's going to pay nine hundred dollars to. Um, get his mp3s back when they can be downloaded again okay uh, let me see what else we got the last thing is a Dell laptop that's not giving video which I suppose we could we could work on so it's a latitude um, Dell latitude 5480 It's got a removable keyboard, which most latitudes do. And looks like just some screws on the bottom of it. Let me see. When do I need to leave? I think I gotta go in like 20 minutes, so I, I there's there's no I, I don't think there's any point in even getting into this. But overall, we're doing good. We got the uh, the desktop up and running. We replaced the battery on a MSI laptop, and we've replaced the hard drive with a solid state drive on a old HP laptop, and we're reinstalling Windows. So overall, we're getting stuff done. You lost connection for a minute. Okay, not showing any dropped frames. Hmm. How long have we been going? Two hours and eighteen minutes. Okay, I, I think the drop frames um, and the, um, the the issue was just temporary. It, it seemed to be okay. So next day continue. Um, I I I I suppose I I'll probably just get this Dell up and running um, instead of waiting for another stream another day. I may. Um, I may make a video of it so I can show it on stream. But actually, you know, speaking of that, um, let me see. I had done a uh, DC jack replacement. Let me see if I can bring it up. I think this may be it. Yeah. So the DC jack on this thing was broken. It's a um, Lenovo L13. No, wait a minute. This is not the DC jack. This was replacing the keyboard. That is not what I was looking for. Um, let me let me check something else. 
So we're at 73% on reinstalling Windows. Okay, here comes the DC jack replacement I did a couple of days ago. I think I show it here. Yeah, you can kind of see it there right in the middle. The pins are just exposed. So that was me making sure it wasn't just asleep by pressing buttons and, and tapping on the trackpad and just to make sure it was really off before I go opening it up. On an HP laptop, if you see these these long rubber bumpers, it usually means there's screws underneath. That one just completely broke off, so I had to re restart the uh, the excavation. Now, let me do a let me do a move of of chat so I can see what y'all are up to. So, so this one, it, it came off completely and it actually, it brought the adhesive strip with it. The other one, the adhesive strip is still there, which I'm just going to go right through. What's my next work after stream? After, I'm, 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 I'm cutting the stream um, in order to go pick up a friend. Uh, after that, um, I don't think I have any work to do other than maybe getting this, uh, this Dell laptop up and running. But then shortly after that, it's going to run into my daughter getting off the school bus. Yeah, but the general procedure for opening most, most laptops is take all the screws out of the bottom and then pry off the bottom, which I think that was all the screws. Yeah. So next you're going home repair service. I'm not sure what you mean by that, Mr. Teji. I don't have a micro solder station. I do have a, a air rework station, but uh, I actually took it off my desk uh, a couple of months ago because I hadn't touched it in a year. I, I don't. Um, I don't particularly enjoy soldering, and I'm not good at it. <laughs> my eyes uh, for close-up work are not what they used to be. Hey, Anuj. Didn't see you there. You lost connection. Okay, Bruce. I gotcha. Okay, so I pried off the uh, the bottom piece basically, with the exception of uh, there's a little bit hanging on there. Whenever you go to take them off, it's important to make sure that the the plastic is is clearing the um, the ports on the sides. So here, I, I was I was suspecting that some of the screws had reattached themselves, and one of them had. So there you go. Okay, so um, I think I just briefly point things out here. There's the hard drive, the battery, RAM. No option to, to add more RAM because the spot's there, but there's, there's not a socket for it. There's Wi-Fi, and there's the DC jack. So yeah, so I'm, I'm just looking at it right now just to see what needs to be taken out in order to get to it. 
it kind of looks it the the DC jack is going underneath the motherboard a little bit I think or am I thinking of a different computer so right now I'm I'm taking the screws out of that hinge so I can lay it up but I also see that the display cable needs to come out of the motherboard so yeah it's got a piece of tape over it one screw holding the battery in which I didn't necessarily have to take that out but it's it's a good idea whenever you're disconnecting uh, specifically the display cable it's a good idea if you can to uh, remove the battery because as you take in or if you, as you put in the, the display cable and take it out either on this side or on the monitor side if those pins get uh, get crossed it can uh, can take out the video port and then you've got a, a motherboard that needs replacing so yeah the the DC jack is is right there and it's it's just held in with some with some plastic it's not screws or anything and it goes underneath the motherboard so yeah I'm gonna pull out the um, the original DC jack from the motherboard and then kind of back it out and I find that I can get it out without re removing the, uh, the motherboard which is great because otherwise I'd have to disconnect a whole bunch of extra crap I think I take I spend a little bit of time getting this to pop out there's a bit of plastic there at the top that looks like it's holding it so I kind of pulled it back to dislodge it and it still didn't come I ended up having to put a, a fair amount of force in order to get the DC jack to come out oh god the porn's back every once in a while they try We'll just hide that and I will report. John, you shake too much to do it. Okay. I, I can see that being a problem too. Go for an offline computer service nearby. Hmm. Oh, are you asking if I if I actually like work at a um, a repair service? If that's what you're asking, no. Um, this this is what I do. Um, I fix computers here, and I go out and fix computers at people's places. But no, I don't have like a second job that I go to. This is it. Been doing this since two thousand nine. I had the hardest time getting this back in. I ended up just having to like put some extra pressure to get it to pop in and it finally does. There it went, I think. No, not quite. Almost. Still working on it. Okay, so you used to manage a shop in Colorado. Okay. Yeah, DC jack replacement's fairly common. I'm going to get this eventually. I kept looking at it to try and see if there was something in the way. And then it just turns out in the end I just need to push harder. I think that got it. Yeah. And then I tried to move it and it's, it's, it was obvious it was in right. Okay. So yeah. So I put it under the motherboard. And I realize it's it's too long. I need to kind of squish it down under the motherboard to make it fit right. And then I run into another problem here. Cannot get this thing to go in. So this DC jacket, it came from, from Amazon. Um, and it's made to be compatible with, with several different laptops. And it is, but um, I find here after I look at the two that uh, there's an extra bit on this new one that's not on the old one and that's what's that's what's keeping it uh, from going in
Oh, by the way, the laptop is doing this. It's just getting ready. It's uh, it's detecting devices. But because the processor in it is so slow, that uh, that E1 processor, it's going to take a long time. All right, back to center. So here I am looking at them just to verify that they are they are the same, and they are, with the exception of a little bit of plastic at the bottom part of it here. The old one has a bit of plastic at the top, but not at the bottom. And I could I could probably just push harder here and get it to shear off the piece of plastic, but you also risk breaking the connector on the um, on the laptop on the motherboard. So yeah, I think I can pair them again. And you can see it there. The the original doesn't have that little bit of plastic at the um, at the front, kind of the bottom right near my thumb. Try one more time just in case. And it's pretty obvious. It just it won't the the bottom part of it won't go in. So what do I do? Not sure what I was looking at there. Oh, I was looking at the connector itself and realizing that there's not a place for the little bit of plastic to fit in. Yeah. Then I reach for my little side cutters and trim that little bastard right off. Like that. And Look at that, it goes in just fine. Cool. Yeah, so at this point it's a matter of routing the cable and then putting it back together. And I've got to go in like five minutes. Okay, so putting back in the uh, the display cable, and what I'm doing is I'm using the um, the bit of uh, the plastic over it to like pull it into place. Okay, and then. I think I mess up and put a screw in the, in the wrong location here briefly. Yeah, one of those twos was supposed to go in that, that bottom one there, a little bit closer to uh, to the motherboard. But I think I figured that out here pretty quick. <laughs> I accidentally started a video. Oh, shut up, Cortana. Though the Windows install is, uh, is getting to that point. So I blew dust out. There wasn't much. But since I had it open, why not, right? Hello, Samet. Yeah, on, on the laptop Windows install, I'm just I'm clicking through the um, um, the region and do you have a second keyboard and that stuff. Okay, so then right here is where I realized I put the screw in the wrong place. That screw right there is meant to go through the hole that I'm just about to take the screw out, and that screw belongs at the bottom part. Like that. Okay, so I'm I'm wrapping the plastic around the connectors there. That's very important. And I'm looking through to make sure the uh, the DC jack is is aligned properly before I go any further. Okay. 
Okay, and in, in that point, it's just putting the screws in, putting the drive back in, booting it up, and making sure the um, the DC jack works. So I can probably skip forward a little bit. Okay, so the bottom's on. Here comes the DC jack. Or not DC jack, the AC adapter. All the way in. And I'm pretty sure I just boot up and make sure that it's showing that the DC jack is receiving power. Okay, CMOS checks them. So this happens if um, if the, the system doesn't have a CMOS battery in it. If you take away its main power from the battery, it will lose its uh, CMOS settings. But the defaults are fine on this laptop. And once uh, we get back into Windows, I can reset the time and date. Not a big deal. And it is running off a hard drive, so it's, it takes a little while for it to boot up. Okay. I'll have to try that. The super fetch. Turning off. Disable screen darkening makes a difference. Huh. Wouldn't have thought that. Okay, I'm gonna... So, that's... That's done with the, uh... The DC jack, and that's the end of that video. Um, back to POV here. Y'all see? Okay. Let me move something around. Okay, so Windows 10, I'm going to say I don't have an internet connection. So then it will allow me to create a user account. And I'm just going to call it HP because I don't know I don't know what name they uh, they want on it. They can always add another user account. No password. Okay, turn off everything but diagnostic data and location. And yeah, um, not now to Cortana. All right, so I'll finish that up. Stop. So that was my alarm to get going. There's the uh, there's the stats on the CPU. It's at 65 degrees C, and it's been running for I think well over well over 50 minutes. So I'm just going to leave that running while I'm while I'm gone. If I'm if it's still running and, and uh, you know stable and good temperatures, I, I would say that's successful uh, burn-in test, and I'll shut it down and have the the client come get their brand new computer. Um, but yeah, I got to get going. Um, you too, huh? <laughs> cool. All right. Well, thanks everybody for coming and and hanging out and. Um, Making good suggestions for things to do, things to try. We got uh, we got it all working, with the exception of the dead hard drive, which it's uh, it's just too bad. Um, okay, RFI forty six hundred H and sixteen gigabytes of RAM. Cool. All right. Well, uh, next time I have um, a, a couple of computers to to show y'all, I'll do I'll do a new stream another uh, live stream and uh, throttle stop ah okay I have to check that out okay cool uh, yeah I gotta get going thanks everybody uh, come hanging out and everything and being such uh, good citizens of, uh, of the internets um, y'all have a good rest of your day